Hi friend! This chapter of the Story Breathing Project has us breathing in the story of Timbrel Kiati. Timbrel is a fashion designer, stylist, boutique owner, and she's found a way to use her passion and her talent to make a real difference for others. I love breathing in Timbrel's story. It's filled with hope and perseverance and overcoming. I always leave time with her feeling motivated and inspired to keep following my heart towards what it is that I'm meant to do in this world. I know her story can do the same for you. Breathe it in, let it stir, inspire, and change you. And let's see how this story influences what you are breathing out into the world next. My name is Timbrel Kathy, and I'm the designer and founder of Lush Bazaar. And Lush Bazaar is a high-end ethical fashion line. I have the honor of working with individuals in India who previously worked in sweatshops or come from very low circumstances. So I work with them and we create beautiful pieces of fabrics, fashion, bespoke gowns to bring to America, especially Lancaster County, because that's where we're located. And so my goal in, with Lush Bazaar is to really change the fashion world with um, being ethical and responsible. I realize now that I always want to do something in fashion. I was really young when I picked up my first needle and thread. I was actually four. Four? Yeah, four <laughs> years old. I don't know what my mom was thinking, but I saw her sew something and I just thought it was really cool. And so I, she gave me like a needle and thread and I sewed um, a handkerchief with my dad's initials. But then in high school, I also loved drawing and sketching and like making pieces of clothing from what I had. But I never really knew that was a choice I had. Uh, I was always told that there's only two professions. It's an engineer and a doctor. Oh. So I went to, to be a doctor and I thought that was the only way to go. And I pursued it as much as I possibly could, the cadavers and all that. But when it got to the point of being in a hospital and like working with patients, I just couldn't um, go forward. After college, okay. I decided to move to India pursue, I call it my eat, pray, love moments. Nice. Where I was, was, yes, I agree. It just changed me because I wanted to go back to India and make a difference and I wanted to volunteer and I had the chance to do that, the nonprofit that I work closely with. So I went back, I taught English, I work with um, underprivileged women. I worked in a leprosy hospital, which really changed me to my core. And so maneuvering my way with doing as much good as I could, I realized that the fashion option was like the route that I wanted to go. My love for people and fashion, I feel like really drives me. I love the people I work with, I love my customers, and I love the impact I'm making with fashion. Combining her love of fashion with her desire to make a difference, Timbrell decided to listen to the call that most excited her spirit. And then I get to work with fabrics and like everyone has their thing that they love. For me, it's fabrics, like feeling fabrics and seeing how they dye and how the weaves are, like it just, it's so beautiful to me, it's art. And I believe that when you're creative, you just can't let go of that. I actually had like went through a bazaar, which is why it's called Lush Bazaar, yeah. and wanted fabrics to just make clothing for myself. Um, and then one lady who I first hired, she's the one that kind of came up to me and you know asked if she could help me, and that just like snowballed into whoa, this fashion could make a difference and could make a change. So she really inspired me in a big way. And then she um, kind of started working with me, and then other women, mothers that I knew would be like, hey, can I? can I work with you, I need some extra money, or my husband is not really helping out at home, and so it just kind of like grew, and a lot of mothers were hearing about it and wanted to be part of it. And things started falling into place, but there were still obstacles and setbacks along the way. It took me forever to actually get an apartment, and after getting turned down almost 20 some times to get an apartment, I finally got one. 
but that also became my workspace for you know the women that I work with to come in there. And then I got kicked out of that apartment because I was I had these women come in. I was okay. using it as a workspace. So. I don't know why that didn't discourage me at the time. Like I feel like that should have been like big red flag, just stop. Yeah. But um, I just was like, okay, well, this apartment might be too small anyway, so let's try to find a bigger one. And so then I just kind of went from there and the women followed me and they saw that I had something to offer them and help them. As Timbrell got to working with the women in India, she was inspired by the simplicity of life and contentment that they found in their lives. The way they live was so simple, you know, like when they would have lunch, it was like just a little bit of rice and, you know, like a vegetable and the way they dress was very simple and then they would wear like the same sari maybe like three times that week and I just really admired that because they were just trying every way to live a good life as well as being respectful to everyone around them um, and not like waste. Breathing their stories in changed the way she felt compelled to make and create in the world. She knew her path was meant to be entwined with theirs. Yeah. And I just realized that I was a very wasteful person, especially in college when you're trying to fit in and you like need a new piece of clothing every, every week yeah, yeah, or you know yeah. every time you go out you're like oh I need to buy something and you know, I was like, why do I need that many pieces of clothing? And why do I want to try to buy more than I really need? I have seen what has happened when really big companies go to other countries like India, Cambodia, Bangladesh, and they just don't really work with the people. I've seen them just take people for granted. We forget the people that are behind the clothing we make. Like we, we look at that on, in on the hanger and we're like, oh, that's beautiful. There's a person on the other side of the world that you know misses their child's birthday or is not able to make means meet for their children to go to school. Or, and you forget that because they're so far away. And I don't want to be that kind of business. And I really want to bring the people that I work with closer where people really know they're who makes the clothing. And I try to make it as real as I possibly can with like them signing um, the tags or just to really bring it up close. Like, we have real people. I love socially conscious fashion, ethically made. I just, I'm so passionate about it. So there are people that are gonna walk in the door that have no idea what socially conscious or slow or ethical fashion is. Yeah. So do you feel like part of your calling is to kind of help people understand that so that they can shop more mindfully and live more mindfully? I think so. Yeah. I hope so. It's I like a default. I feel like yes. it's happening by default. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so. I, I mean, I didn't think about it like yeah. that. But You're an educator. I, Congratulations. Yeah, yes. My grandmother would be so proud. <laughs> Engineer, doctor, yeah. educator, educator, and fashion designer. Who knew? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I yeah. hope I can do that. Yeah. I really, and I, like when people come in my store, and they don't buy anything. I'm not upset about that. I'm not offended. I know that people have different tastes, but I try to do my best to tell them everything and how it's made and like what goes in the process, hoping that they understand in the future that they can always come here and get something unique and yeah. handcrafted. Yeah. An unforeseen aspect of what Timbrell does is to educate the community about some of the things she's most passionate about. Ethical fashion, slow fashion, and even helping people navigate the difference between cultural appreciation and cultural appropriation. My parents always tried to instill in us what our culture was, but I didn't really understand the culture until I moved to India. I think we all are drawn to a culture or people, you know, like that's just something we feel is beautiful. And I love when people wear my clothing. It doesn't matter nationality, culture. I make my clothing for everyone to wear, but I want them to understand the importance of a piece of clothing and the history or cultural representation of the clothing. I have saris in the shop, I have salwar kameezes, and I make them with a lot of care, and you're going to Indian wedding and you're like, I need a sari, please wear that. But if you come into the store and say, I want to wear this for a Halloween outfit, or a festival or something like that, I would just, you know, I would not really think that's a respectful way of you trying to show that you um, care for the culture and the people. One of the most brilliant ways that Timbrell has embraced her role as a cultural appreciation educator is in the development of cultured wedding workshops.
Throughout the year, Timbrell hosts cultured wedding workshops that celebrate and highlight a specific culture through the lens of weddings. Professionals in the wedding industry get together to learn from brides from that specific culture about aspects of love, marriage, and ceremony that are traditionally important. The experience is so immersive and informative that even though it's promoted as an educational fine art photography workshop, the event geared towards wedding professionals who wish to best serve clients from various cultural backgrounds is by design such a beautiful representation and reminder of the way that true love seeks to see, to serve, to cherish, and to celebrate what is unique and important to the other. We talked a lot about why you started. What do you think is the potential as far as like where you're going and what's the impact that you're hoping to make? It's a good question because, well, it's almost been a year since I've been in my boutique. So I kind of took the first year as my experiment period okay. and to really learn what customers and my clients want as well as like what I have to offer. And the more I'm digging into like the ethical, sustainable world, the more I realize that bridal wear is something that's not really tapped into. And I've had enough bridal clients to realize that brides and even grooms want to wear something that represents them. And they you know, want to invest in something that tells their story and who they are. And to do it an ethically way, I think it really makes a difference. And you know, when you're falling in love and you're telling this love story, why not do it with helping someone else? You know? So I really want to really push forward in Lancaster and to other like, bridal stores in the area and to just have the feel of like the fabrics that I work with, which are mostly organic fabrics, and the silhouettes that are you know fusion as well as just very bridal um, western. I'll still have my collection, I'll still have my boutique, but I really want to have Lush Bazaar have like a name in the bridal industry that's ethically and socially consciously made. What are some of the influences that you're excited about bringing back into this community? I do a collection every summer and every winter um, and I really try to focus on Indian art and fabrics. Every collection I do something different that represents a different area in India or a different form of art. Um, for the summer collection I did Kalamkari which is an ancient Indian form of block printing pretty much and they tell, so it tells a story. Historically they would draw this Kalamkari print on um, silk and cotton and it would tell a story kind of like hieroglyphics for Egyptians. So, you know we have our own form of art and the way we would tell stories so I really wanted to um, put that in my last collection and you know the, there's also muggums it's kind of a work where the, they're hand, um, hand embroidered by hand and you use um, different forms of like lace and beads and so it's just beautiful on fabric and there's Banaras which is like a form of silk that you make in, in Gujarat and so I really want to showcase these forms of art because India has such a rich history of art, culture and fabric mixed together and so with each collection I hope to do that and you know to have people ask questions because the questions really help me explain things more so yeah I love doing that. I love breathing in the story of how Timbrell turned her passion as an artist into this multifaceted social enterprise that brings hope and empowerment to her employees in India, as well as cultural learning, possibility, and connection to her home community here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So what about you, friend? How can breathing in Timbrell's story inspire or change what you're breathing out into the world? Are you inspired to find that sweet spot between what you love doing and meeting a real social need? Are your wheels turning about how you can turn an idea into something more? Are you curious about what you can do to consume in more ethical, mindful, sustainable, and socially conscious ways? If you're feeling inspired, I hope you'll act on that inspiration. Pursue your passion and do it in a way that makes a real difference for people who need it most. 
or take the time to really consider the cultural significance of the people around you and how learning about different cultures might enhance whatever kind of work you're doing. I know that attending the Mexican Culture Wedding Workshop made me feel that I wish there were professional development opportunities in every field that focus on how we can best respect, honor, appreciate, and celebrate the traditions, values, and cultures of our diverse communities. If nothing else, I hope you're inspired to know that there are people like Timbrell walking around in the world with us who believe in the power of uniting passion with purpose and who are doing beautiful, meaningful things with great love. I hope her story inspires you to learn more about the cultures represented around you. If you're local, make sure you stop by Lush Bazaar when you're shopping downtown or contact Timbrell for a custom order to make your next special occasion one of a kind. No matter where you live, you can also make a difference by educating yourself about your impact as a consumer. You can click the links below to learn more about shopping ethically and responsibly or to donate to the nonprofit that Timbrell works with in India. I hope Timbrell's story feels like hope and inspiration in your lungs and we can't wait to hear how you breathe that out in your own way. Hope you're making the most of your one wild and precious now.